So that's that's worth it. That's worth it. did I get too close to the camera on that one? A little bit too close. Should I should I oh should I back up a little bit? Okay, sorry about that. My bad. I've been awake for probably close to 32 hours. Like I have to like hold my keyboard like the normal way. Because if I do it, I feel like I have arthritis if I hold my keyboard like that. It blows my mind. I can never do that. Like, this kid, this guy right here, he's got his keyboard like off at an angle. His isn't that extreme. There's a kid all the way down on the far end who has his keyboard all the way at like a horizontal. Yeah. That's really cool. They're gonna be at that table right over there. Public information? Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> this isn't live, so it doesn't matter. It's not live, but like you and I know. Yeah, we know. I'm not gonna tweet it. Awesome. What game do you play? Smash Bros. Who do you play? Is it embarrassing? Is it like Villager? Yeah. <laughs> is it Villager? Am I spot on? No, oh not, my god. Is it the Ice Climbers? No. Is it Game & Watch? No. Is it Pichu? No. Is it Wario? No. I can keep going. I think yeah, I can name every character in the game. I believe in you. Is it, did I say the Ice Climbers already? Yeah, you said them. Is no, it them? Is it them a second time? No. Okay. All right. Um, oh, is it one of the Lynx? Yes, it is. Is it Toon Link? It is. Oh, that is pretty embarrassing. Is that is rough. Who do you play? I'll give you $20 if you guess correctly right now. First try? First try. Give me a single hint. It's an obscure character. An obscure character. Not played very often. Is it We Fit Trainer? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I'm the interviewer for a reason, baby. I do what I do. I don't need the money. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. Hi. So, Bowser Jr., We Fit, and I. <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> Are you all lying to me? Am I being gaslit? No, 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 Bowser no, no, Jr., We Fit, and you told me already. Oh, uh, Toon Link. Yep. Where's my main support at? Hi. Who are we playing this weekend? Uh, a lot of Brig. A lot of Brig, really? Brig Lucio, probably. Brig Lucio, really? I shouldn't say that too loud. I don't want to give all your strategies. It's over under. What do you mean over under? Like, like, do we think we're gonna podium? Do we think we're gonna come in last place? Not last place. Not last place. Certainly not last. What about place. like fifth place? That's doable. It's that's doable. That's that's winnable. Third place. Third, third mm, that's where that's where things get dicey. That's very doable. Okay. First place. That's very doable. First place, very doable. Love it. That's the mindset. That's what he loves to hear. Yeah. Oh my God. Hold on. Cut the cameras. Well, who are you? Hello. Oh, that's that's oh my God. I saw you earlier. I saw the back of your shirt. And I was like, I was like, I know that name. I know him. It's a quick play game. They they Q snipe each other at land. I thought it was a scrim. It's just unlucky. Are you actually a villager player? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about villager being notably worse in Smash Ultimate than they were in Smash 4? Uh, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? You never played Smash 4? No. Oh, that's all right. Nobody, nobody's gonna hold that against you. Now, who do you play? I play Robin. Okay, wow. Did you know Robin has the lowest pick rate in the game? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's not a Samus game. Come on, the LEDs, it looks just like Samus. It's a Samus game. Huh? Do you disagree? It gives I guess I can vibe. see The it. Samus vibe. Show the controller to the camera. We're interviewing. This is recording, by the way. Surprise. Not my controller. Who do you play? I play Peach. Oh, oh, wow, I like that. Who do you play? I play the Shotos, mostly Kazi. No, you lose against Kirby. Yeah, lose against That's Kirby. just like a statistics thing. Yeah. It's maybe. maybe. <laughs> this is a death match, and I think they're all on the same one. They're all on Icebox. Are they, oh, are they, are they all in the same death match? Maybe. Who knows? I feel like none of them can hear me. I want to, like, approach somebody, but no one, no one can hear They all have both their headphones on. What's up? How do we think we're doing? I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. What's, what's your kitty? Uh, we're looking at 10 and 6 right now. Oh, hey, that's third, dude. That's better than I expected. Who's who's bottom frag right now? I want to go talk to them. Ian? Hey, how do you think we're doing so far? Uh, you know, it could be better. It could be better? You're one of those rough days? Well, you know. Let's go find more people to harass. Yeah. Where's, Bo where's Boise State? Who's that's your it's... favorite to play? Oh, uh, right now, it's got to be their Chamber of Breach. What country is Cypher from? Oh, dude. Um, it's Moroccan, right? It is Morocco! Oh, my God, I didn't think anyone was going to get that. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> All right, see you later. Let's go harass Boise State more. Who is this? What school is this? Boise? This is Boise. Oh man, that's okay. Boise still got really good odds. A large bagel, one of their tank players, Nerdy Bird, they're off tank, both of them not here. A little bit scary, for being honest. Getting warmed up, getting ready to cast some players. No, okay, not cast, interview. Change your mindset, change your mindset. Words. No, but last words until we until we come back. Oh, okay. If we're leaving. Enjoy. Oh, that was good, that was good. Anything from you? What are you doing, Polly? Awesome, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Welcome to ECAC Top Plays of the Week. This is Rod, your favorite host, back at it again with more stellar plays from Collegiate Esports. Special thanks to our partners at Esports U for the additional coverage. Now let's hop straight into it. Starting off this week at number 8, we have Torchy showing aerial dominance. They show that you're going to have to work a little bit harder if you want to get back on their stage. Now you've got to mix up your timings getting back onto the stage. Toyuchi is looking for something, able to still find the jab, oh. and the foil is going to be good. Next up, we have Cabinus, showing us what impact on a support player really looks like. 
the timing of a Lucio God, they come in to claim the play of the game. The player just going to deny anyone an attempt to hit the objective and... Welcome back everyone to the first Esports U Network broadcast back in action. We're kicking things off with the first week of ECAC Fall 2022. Valerie, I'm Los, joined by Vincent, and I don't think I could get all the words out. I'm just so excited to be here. I mean, hype doesn't even start to cover it. We are pumped to, to get things started. Like you said, first broadcast back and we have an amazing Valorant matchup coming right at you. It's going to be a good one. We got uh, CSI Dolphins going up against the uh, Flying Shaw Fuel. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. And Los, as per usual, a biased cast from you. Yeah, uh, whoa, you just had to expose me off the rip right there. I was hoping to just ease it out a little bit. College of Staten Island, the Dolphins. We got to put it down for the city, maybe. But, you know, they're Staten Island, so it's not it's not too hard of a commitment. It's it's the fifth borough. We don't talk about it too much, but we do accept it. So the bias is, is it's going to be minimal. It's going to be minimal. I promise all the fans of ECAC back at home. But if we're going to have this matchup, we might as well check out what's going on. Let's take a look at the map bands going forward for this matchup. And first off, we have Bind picked by CSI, followed up by Breeze. And if it is needed, Icebox will be the decider. Yeah, listen, I'm a big Breeze fan, so I'm, I'm happy that we're going to be seeing a little bit of Breeze. Uh, but I think the, the real conversation point here um, is that I, I think consistently we've been seeing collegiate teams especially go away from Pearl, which surprises me a little bit. I'm not quite sure why that is, but we, I mean, you and I haven't seen it at all in, in our uh, first couple of weeks endeavoring back into the collegiate scene since it's been released. So I'm excited to kind of go back to uh, basics, at least with regard to Bind, but then Breeze Icebox coming up as well. Should be a whole lot of fun as we get things started. Um, I'm definitely interested, though, to get your thoughts, Los, on who you think has the edge here, because uh, I'm not too sure. Well, I mean, you already exposed that at the beginning of the broadcast, didn't you, Vince? You already know. We're, it's, we're, we're leaning at a 2-1 uh, a finish. Dolphins mm. doing it to them. CSI potentially coming out on top, but it's going to be a grueling matchup. First of the semester, we're going to check out the agent selection. This is going to be the real identifier of what we can expect going into the server. And you get to see us while the agents are picked. So you're, you're, you may be wondering, who's, who's going to pick up Vincent and who's picking Lowe's? Regardless, I'm going to stop joking around. <laughs> well, no, the jokes keep coming because you know what? I am fueled up and ready to see this Fanshaw W, Los. Get out of here <laughs> with your bias. Fanshaw fuel all the way. And, uh, well. That's bias. Are... You're biased too. You're just in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Stop exposing me. That's unreasonable. Oh, man. We are already having a good time here on the broadcast, and, uh, Bind is where we're headed, uh, don't be fooled by the uh, sultry green tones of Fracture, which uh, it does look beautiful. But we are we are headed, unfortunately, away from the green and into the uh, into all of the desert. But all good as we uh, look to, to kind of see how things go. And I mean, I think that things pretty standard on that agent selection front. Um, Those are some differences, right? I mean, we we have the single initiator versus the double initiator fade and sky have been a huge adjustment and honestly i'm a big fan of seeing that come out consistently especially as a duo yeah and i'm wondering how well that will perform against the traditional pick with seraphic sova as fate has been taking the scene the meta by storm you will always see that. this agent selected but apparently not the College of Staten Island, and their first approach will make it to B, but no one's going to be waiting for them on Hookah. I like this double setup towards Long, but it's about to be exposed. Once they're pulling back, Prince Big Homie, down. they had no idea. No, you can't doubt the Big Homie. Donkey Lover 302, the first one to fall, but strong retaliation from the rest of CSI. But through it all, it's a three-on-three, and three. Dakota from the back Ali was able to finish things off, and it's so much confidence, a bit of too overconfidence. Coming from CSI, thought they had it all under control, and were caught with their pants down in multiple occasions. 
Yeah, they just kind of went in there expecting to, I mean, not expecting, they had somewhat cleared the site, but they weren't quite expecting the very fast re-aggression that Fanshaw was willing to put on, and it definitely turned things uh, on its head very quickly. Great work from Dakota, especially to find that kill, and then Slippery coming around from the elbow side as well, applying the additional pressure to find that first round. And as we look to the scoreboard there, it's like it's going to be a pretty standard second round. No force buys this time. As uh, CSI is going to elect to allow and Sean to have it. Down, B. Big homie doing the initial work. Anastasia, she won't be able to break on through. And that's the spike. They've already lost control of that. And they continue to hold this angle. Fan Sean are surely to take this second round. Oh, donkey lover trying to... Uh, Retreat, unfortunately, has to retreat through a uh, snake bite. That's never going to be very good for your health. Remaining. Nice shots from Dakota as well. He's just uh, Appomattox, who a couple of misses. is going to go down with no casualties. The Van Shaw college side of thing. Yeah, beautiful esports. You flawless there. The first one of the season. And rightfully so, based off of that well done force round. But we talked about the double initiator i also want to take a look at the double controller that we're seeing from fanshaw college i mean it's it's quite an interesting one i haven't seen the utilization of a viper uh, in in recent times not to mention a double controller situation you know i feel like that viper has always sort of been like not not necessarily meta but like it's always been there or thereabouts so like i'm not that myth to see it but it definitely is a, a bit of a different look than we've seen as of recently basically because of how popular this double uh, initiator setup has been because of that we tend to not see that like not having a chamber sort of unheard of at this point but that, there's no chamber to be had oh noted unable to pull the trigger as the blind doesn't give them safety seraphic won't be able to see anything but they do have some sight now with the recon dart give them some information regardless Look back, send some poking bullets, and look to bait out the positions from CS or from Fanshaw. Put it caught out in the open there is a little bit unfortunate. Was caught behind the toxic screen, but Dakota has heard the rotation and an upgrade to a vandal as well, while the rest of the attackers push their way onto this site. Spike planted. Anastasia sending back some bullets, removing slippery, but sustain! Beautiful two-piece, now leveling the playing field. A one-on-one, -on -one, but Big Homie secures it out. And Fanshaw won't lose their first round. Not yet a huge victory against the rifles of Staten Island. Yeah, Fanshaw showing themselves to not just be strong with regard to those pistols, not to be just able to pick up the anti-eco type of rounds, but on a bonus of all things, we talk about how, how difficult that is to win consistently and Shaw take it away. So, showing themselves out to be a strong contender early on in this series. And, well, just to remind everybody, I know it hasn't been too long, but this is CSI's map pick. It's only 3-0. Not making any uh, statements here, but still, a very good start on your opponent's map. And in recognition of that, they have called the timeout. And interesting enough, we've spoken about the, I would say, forward thinking that comes with an early game timeout. Give yourself a moment to reset. Don't allow a steamroll to continue because this is a perfect posture for Fanshaw to find themselves the next two, three. I wouldn't go as far as to say four rounds, but it is a possibility. And if you could come up with a reset at this moment, even though you're going to be working with a, a tattered and scattered by for round four, this is a moment where you might be able to create some mistakes for your opponents. I love the point you're making there because I think so many teams, particularly at the collegiate level, they just get they get a little bit deep into the you know to the mindset of ah well you know we'll just get them next time right well yes but also it's fine to take time out it's fine to take some, some time to think about how you're going to be doing that and you're right taking it early is usually the right decision and well we'll see exactly how right that is as well this time out is over it's time to see these pistols and have some success. The Owl Drone out over here at A. Gonna try to buy some space and time and with the Sky Smokes down as well. There's enough space here to try and get a spike planted. 
Two players positioned inside Shadow Wars. No one making that connection. There's the loss of the spike ball with the sneakers. You have the perfect cover for Slippery to send multiple bullets down into U-Haul. And in a matter of moments, a seemingly okay push coming from CSI is turned for the worst case scenario. Nice movement there by Slippery on the back side. Not only doing some really nice work with the uh, shot to the skull, but also movement nicely done. It gives them a little more time to, uh, to buy his position. This was the, the big shot. moment. There's the loss of the spike with the sneakers. You have every shot. And look at this communication as well, right? Not going for the shot on the boom pot just because they knew they had a teammate ready and waiting. They had said, hey, shoot this boom bot for me. And uh, that's exactly what happened. So, Banshaw College showing me some really good fundamentals in the early stages of this game. It's now time for CSI to try and fight back. Use the haunt. Doesn't get anyone tagged, but it gives the information there's a strong presence. But the dog could have told you that as well. Prowler out in retaliation. This is a huge loss. Wait, how did Anastasia manage to get back there? Must have been a double satchel. But this is a good moment for them. They've got map or site control, but there is a flank on the rise. Anastasia might have a little bit more to work with here, but meanwhile, Serve has made that even more difficult. Going down, this is just a one on four. Nobody really capable in this situation. The big homie gonna give it the best shot. Big, oh, okay. Well, a good kill. However, he won't be able to take down three more in this time, and with the luck of those smoke sprays, Big Homie was just looking for anything that they could piece together. But four rounds in a row, finally the streak ends, and CSI will take their first in round five. And it's all at the back of Anastasia there. I, like, so so much good work done. You mentioned it. We didn't necessarily see, and, and I'm, I mean, I would assume it had to have been a double satchel to get back into that area so quickly but the follow-up on that prowler one bit of utility being thrown out and instantly sustain is being pressured and eventually taken out as well and that really just opens things up anastasia able to get the board position deny the players coming in through ct and it's a round on the board for csi but one round that's great los but it's not going to be good enough you have to be able to put multiple rounds together the ability to build on it noted Caught in the paint shells, a lot of damage, and put right in the crosshairs of Anastasia. She breaks this site open. However, help is on the way. It's the raise. Wait a minute. The use of the showstopper, it doesn't find the connection. But Big Homie is able to clear out the garden regardless. And even the flank, Appomattox thought this was it. They've got the site secured. But no, Vanshaw will have that survival. And what looked so promising in the beginning of the round fell apart so swiftly. Los, the problem is the site, it's useless without the spike. And that's what Big Homie does, drops the spike, gets not only the two players carrying it, but as well, Appomattox coming in last moment, trying to reflank that angle, apply the pressure from multiple different positions. It's ineffective. Big Homie with a huge triple kill set themselves up for success and this is why the statement i made at the beginning of that round is so important los it's great to win a round but unfortunately it puts you in just as bad a spot if you're not able to win a couple in a row start to build up your economy and put yourselves in a multi-round sort of situation nice moment with the paint shells but walking through here is walking into death that sky smoke what? What? Okay. A beautiful headshot onto noted Appomattox. Taking advantage of the fountain. Able to land one right over the smoke with that vantage point. And bringing out the tour de force will cause anyone to have pause if they want to look down B long. And in that moment, it's a rotation. CSI is headed to A. But it, again, they will not be able to clear out showers. Dakota is a major threat. And have the snake bites ready to go, but... Forced to take some shots. That is a pretty big key. And the Nightfall could be there to try and apply that pressure, but it's easily dodged as well. 
Unfortunately for the defense, though, Sistain is going down, and, well, maybe this is not so bad. Slippery with the showstopper. Slippery continues the onslaught. Able to get a kill, but that's all they're good for now. A two on two. The pain shells in this. Oh, their no. mark maybe a death. No, but 12 HP. Coming out for the swing with the Sheriff. Dakota knows the wraparound has to be the answer, and they've got a response. It's a sixth round for Fanshaw, but even so, that was a minimum buy from CSI. That's fair. I mean, they did a whole lot with very little. They used the, the utility that they were able to purchase up alongside those minimal guns. And they made it look very good. That said, was uh, some issues uh, in the in the retake there, or against the retake. Uh, you know, a little bit of a misplaced paint shell happened. But definitely was a uh, situation that got punished pretty quickly. Nonetheless, this is the round that I think we need to see CSI adjust a little bit more. It's actually going to be adjustment from Fanshawe to go for aggression, but they're punished. Oh! Even further, Slippery, who's been a menace, a pain in the behinds of CSI, has put that issue behind. Big homie now, the lone defender, but I hope was on the way again. A double rotation. We have some more lurk coming in from Appomattox. That might be able to create an opening because this entry onto B site is incredibly stalled. I like this rotation. It's really good from CSI. They've heard multiple different players taking shots and so they rotate back over here to A and C. Oh my goodness. That was aggressive sure but i'm okay with that that was that was a great idea unfortunately it doesn't work out though you got the hunter's fury for seraphic ready to go this is still very well a sweeping guiding light Sando really the shots are coming through but they're able to get the kill the defusal was tapped but sustain is hit with bullets and they are peppered and seraphic with a perfect timing on that dart distracts sustain enough to look away while they come in for the swing. Like I said, a, a solid setup from CSI on the retake. And so I think it was perfectly valid for Anastasia to go for those uh, those aggressive maneuvers because of it. Nice clutch. Sustain when un unable to readjust off the back of the, the recon bolt. And well, Seraphic didn't even need to throw out that Hunter's Fury that was available. And speaking of ultimates, there's a couple of them available now. I'd love to see something fast utilizing this uh, these ultimates. You know, you could use the Seekers to go in, but those maybe not needed. The Trailblaze are all that is required. Yeah, some potential use of the Orbital Strike. Not today. Slippery from the showers. Stop Anastasia from making that double satchel play. Not this time, they say. Donkey Lover has the option. They can go for this orbital strike to lock out some of the players, but no, they just want to get this spike planted. And Big Homie is sending shots through the smoke. They can't even tell what's going on. Interesting decision to put that orbital strike down in that area. It doesn't actually clear anything, but just applying a little bit of pressure. It's still the man advantage and make it two. Here it is, a stalling tool. But does Donkey have any chance of staying alive? No. It doesn't seem so a last ditch effort to create some time, some space for themselves in the final moments, but you cannot deny the inevitable. You cannot deny Fanshawe College. Let's talk about those orbital strikes a little more because I I will say I'm, I'm a little miffed. I don't quite understand what we were seeing either side, really, um, because Appomattox, excuse me, not Appomattox, noted Throws down the orbital strike in sort of the middle of sight, but not in order to deny the plant. And it was actually offset so that the plant wasn't affected in the slightest, but it didn't get any anybody, the player sitting in the close angle there on the boxes either. So a, a little bit odd. And then, of course, the very end there, the same thing happens with the opponents. I'm just a little confused. <laughs> I can tell you who's not confused on how they're feeling. It's noted a great shot and an escape right after and this is a great moment of pause big homie another one who has fallen as they make that daring play through the teleporter it, that's a, a classic move of the playbook here for Fanshawe 
and there was no need to go for that re-aggression. But Vanshawk go for it anyway, and the cool part is that Slippery re-aggresses there as well, just to make sure that there's a trade there ready and waiting for the player coming through the teleporter. Just great fundamentals from Fanshawe there to make sure that everyone is trading effectively, especially against these weapons that are certainly not in the most ideal position. Ooh, <laughs> slippery. Able to slip out of that unideal position. Make the escape followed up with the sky smoke. Another stall. And I, I'm enjoying Fanshawe's ability to slow down these plays and also create a pinch, a vice grip of this defensive team. Able to keep the aggress aggression in check. Yeah, I mean, sustain with that Prowler. It's just put the entirety of CSI on notice that, hey, y'all... Y'all gotta hurry up. Y'all either gotta clear me, or y'all gotta go to the site. They like to clear them, but look at the time. There's only seven seconds remaining. This is not winnable. They just have to save, and that's what throwing out that utility from Sistain does, right? It, it really puts CSI in a tough spot where they have to go B or go home, and they had to go home. <laughs> no going big in terms of this plan for CSI. Eight to two, the current score, and not much to do going into this next round. Seraphic, the only one with an ultimate, a sustain with a nightfall for the defensive side. And this is going to be an interesting approach. At least they've learned more that there is a necessity to clear out showers because we haven't seen yeah. much pressure put into that side at all when it comes to their aid takes. You will always see Dakota sitting in there waiting for the push. I love that you picked up on that because that's absolutely the case, right? CSI, they're pushing so aggressively here. The nightfall is perfectly timed to stall that out. Now, this this shower aggression, it could be fought for. Anastasia is the first to fall in that endeavor. It's crazy, and look at the flank, big homie, normally playing it down on long, has somehow wrapped all the way around. Via the teleporter, but it's just the the confidence to make that play, clear out showers, and then clear out shorts for the ultimate pinch. It was showing how dedicated, how easily maneuverable FC is around the map. Yeah, I, I mean that that is and, uh, number one, yes, maneuverable. But number two, I think it also goes to the, that communication factor. And I've kind of pointed it out a couple of times here, Los, but. The communication to be able to say, okay, I've spotted three players over here. The early haunt, I believe, is what gave the information about the players towards short. And so you're doing the numbers in your head. You're like, ah, oh, you know, two here, two here. Oh, well, I can go for a quick flank and apply that additional third prong to the approach. It's just fantastic. Everybody individually, I feel like, is is capable of making plays on this Fanshaw side. It doesn't need to be, like, called by an in-game leader per se. It's just... They're able to make that play by seeing what's happening. Noted. Noted again. Huka is always a death trap for CSI. Anytime they want to make their way through, they will pay the death toll of two or more. Now with just Appomatic, the only one in Huka, hoping to get a clear shot, and they will. But after that, it's blocked off. The smoke is there. To keep away the vision. Seraphic and Abomatic actually have a great shot at this if they go for a rotation. This is absolutely big. Seraphic working with 100 Shuri as well, so pays to play this a little bit more passively, but Dakota going to be the one to potentially play spoiler. Has a couple of snake bites, but I don't know if you want to use them. Let me give away this position. Recognition, trigger discipline, and with the spike in hand, Dakota back in all home. Sitting down in the showers. Appomattox has to expose themselves to so many angles. The second they do, it will be all over. However, there is no change noted. Continuing to hold on strong. It's 10 to the first half, and Shaw dominating bind. And listen. I'm not a believer, but for all of you believers in chat, even no 9-3 curse. That's the tragedy here. The uh, sadness, CSI. 
Fanshawe, let, let me, let's just talk about them for just a moment, right? Like, noted there, notably a little bit quiet in the, the start of that first half. Not necessarily required, not playing bad, but I think that's where you see the ability for each of these individuals to pop off and play incredibly well. Because, like we were saying, noted didn't necessarily have any super huge impact moments there early on. Pops a 3K there at the back, back end of the half. Out of nowhere. And that's the danger if you're CSI, is that you got every one of these fan shot members ready to roll. Appomatic with a beautiful opening pick down on short. However, we're seeing that CSI neglected many times in the first half. It's a push through showers. Appomatic all the way from heaven, able to take one down before they fall. Slippery, back in action, a double kill. And a refresh of the paint shells. It's not going to be enough because Anastasia, she's worked well to keep that push on short or detained. And it'll be an easy retake. Quick, fast, and well, the first step in the conversation to make the comeback if you're the CSI Dolphins. And well, you know what? Listen, the Dolphins, they certainly did have to dive into the deep end on this one. Very fast coming out to that uh, that 4-0 deficit um, before they were able to get back in there. Maybe all that was needed, all that's required is, is just a little bit of a change of momentum. That could be what this pistol round means for CSI. They could absolutely be on the cusp of bringing this back. And I really like that Fanshawe have mostly decided to play very respectfully here, right? A lot of times, 10 to 2, you see a team just go for the force, by the way. I, we're going to win. So we'll just buy the guns. No. Fanshawe, they have gone for the save and the traditional right decision, especially, you know, meta in the last year or so. Definitely a reasonable approach because you haven't gotten a taste of what the, the defensive capabilities of CSI are. Noted. With an initial kill, removing Sky, getting way too aggressive there in showers. And that's a good move. I don't know if they have recovered a SMG, though. You know, I just realized that Noted's name is actually just genius. It's, it's great trash talk. It's, it's mad trash talk. Because every time you get a kill, it's just like, yeah, that's Noted. You've been Noted. You've been, you've been Noted. <laughs> I'm in, in my notes here. It, it seems that you're garbage. We've noted that. <laughs> <laughs> We've noted down this kill that I just found on you. 30 seconds left. Time to make the approach. Will Slippery realize the rim is all right beneath? It's Donkey sitting down with the Spectre and staying alive. Speed boost with the Stim Beacon. 20 seconds left. But well, you have a deep push. It's Dakota all the way into CT Vets. Okay, Dakota, that's what we Ten call a freebie left. here in the business, and even gonna get away. Sazia needs to find this kill. Gonna know that they're playing close, but the right oh! click is perfect. It does enough damage as the vulnerability via that snake bite comes to fruition. It's two versus three, and this could be tragedy striking for CSI. Don't you love her. Going through CT, but a beautiful guiding light! Seraphic has no idea what's going down. And big homie in Dakota, now with the upgrade in hand. The last two standing, and time is ticking. Donkey Lover, not much health, and they can spray on through, but it doesn't need to be a wall bang. It's a four banger from Dakota. Oh man, that just brought me back. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dakota, I, that's what we call a bro moment. That, like, Dakota with the Bruh. classic. Like, I mean, that went fair enough, right? But this, this is outrageous. Double right click. They say it was fixed. It's still busted. And this is a fantastic setup as well. That flash, perfect guiding light. And then the closer. Everything looking good. And the respect was there, Los. But unfortunately, doesn't matter. CSI fall to the pistol's. They fall into a classic! The Valorant classic losing to the classic. Something we all know. Oh, Seraphic actually hit with that Trailblazer. They gotta stay safe, but there won't be a follow-up. In fact, this is all testing. No, trying to find out what the uh, what the defensive 
capabilities are, and it seems that they've noted there is a lack of defense now in Garden. Yeah, certainly uh, written down, you know, just, hey, nobody's over at Garden, and well, it looks like there's been a rotation based on that fact. Fanshawe moving themselves in. Aggressive as that is, a bit of a questionable prowler by Sustain, but Sano, lack of information means that you're going to have to try and gather something. They certainly have. Oh, a great reaction from Dakota. Able to survive the Guiding Light and counteract that spray. And I'm not sure where they picked up this Vandal because they originally got the kill with the Spectre. Regardless, now in a two-on-one. Donkey Lover, last one alive. We've seen what Magic of Classic can do, but not when you're pinched like this. As Big Homie and the Fanshaw crew lead it up to Match Matt Point. point. Talk about coming out to a commanding lead. I mean, Fanshaw on CSI's pick at 12-3. ECAC week one turning out to uh, show us a very, very strong Fanshaw college, which I, I'm here for. Big fan, Dakota 19-5, and, and Big Homie 19-6. and six. Right there, the two duo just ready and waiting. But... We go into what could be the final round of this map one the game on the line. The rifles in hand for CSI for the first time this half. Now with that upgraded firepower, what are they capable of? You can see that there is a bit of a forward hold from Anastasia. Looking down on a short. I've got your trail. With these seekers put into play, as well as the orbital strike, they do manage to escape. But all the utility following up, there is no chance. Dakota with the first shot, every ultimate being put into place. The Vipers pit in total now secured the site. The spike leaving only Sano and Seraphic in a two-on-five retake. And I love the positioning of this uh, One of this Viper's remaining. bit here. So good to cover both of the sight boxes. And Zano, last alive, working against all odds here. And it's not going to happen. Sustain the win. final frag. It is 13 to 3. And CSI's map pick is uh, going to be all up to Fan Shaw. They take it all the way. And Los, I mean, I gotta say, it's not looking good for your boys over at CSI. Hey, you know, like I said, it was a 2-1 final scoreline for CSI to take it. You know, they just need to have their crushing defeat power spike to lead into Breeze. But that was a phenomenal start coming from Fanshawe College. Absolutely slamming. And especially the capabilities of communication that we're seeing from this squad. The Discord chat must be buzzing. And the ability for them to have these easy movements, these easy reads, in and out, taking turns, having those sprays that we saw specifically when it was a beautiful spray down, I think, by Slippery, followed up by Big Homie just providing that extra support to destroy that boom bot. Everything that we see from Fanshawe comes down to that simple ease of mind a connection with this entire crew yeah and i want to i want to draw draw our attention to a stat line that i think really shows how fanshaw as a team were playing dominantly because it's easy to look at the scoreboard and think okay big homie dakota like they're the real heavy hitters they're the ones who are making the big plays and the money moves but that's not necessarily true they were doing that but it wasn't just them Everyone, with the exception of Sustain, had two or three first picks in that game. And I think that really goes to, goes to show how effective the entirety of this Fanshawe College team was being in every aspect of the game. A well-oiled machine, and it doesn't rely solely on the superstars, but we'll see if this machine can keep on chugging. As we're going to head into the next map of Breeze right after a quick break, so don't go anywhere. ECAC Week 1 returns right after this. The Seekers, you have oh, could have told you that as well. Prowler out inwards.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup 2022. I am Septilens, joined by Brenda, who is not only a Twitch streamer, but a cancer survivor brought to us by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So, Brenda, of course, if you're comfortable, can you please kind of walk us through what cancer you had and kind of how you battled that over time? Yes, of course. So um, I had I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia (AML). Um, it's a very rare cancer. Um, thankfully, you know, um, treatment for it is pretty good. So 97% uh, chance of it never coming back. I've been um, cancer-free for four years now. Uh, because of this, I am not able to donate blood, uh, which is something I always wanted to do. So I found different ways to help out, and doing charity streams, charity events has helped out a lot. Great, and what a perfect segue. You know, I was going to ask, I feel like there's a very unique bond between cancer and video games. That's not something people would often kind of put hand in hand, but somehow you, you've gone above and beyond to create this connection between the two. And even off the interview, we talked about those charity streams that you've done. So can you walk us through kind of how you use your Twitch channel and your streams to bring awareness and and raise money for these foundations. Yeah, so I use the, the site Filsify. Uh, from there, you can choose any foundation, any um, society to donate money through. You make a campaign, and I like to share it. I like to raise awareness and funds, if possible, for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. They have helped my family. They have helped many people in the past, and in the future, they will be. Um, so that's just how I work around it. Yeah, so how do you kind of encourage your viewers to, to donate money? Is it just kind of setting it up and, hey, it's for a good cause, or do you have incentives or kind of fun little activities that encourage people to spend that money? Yeah, so I do a lot of incentives. I work at a pottery shop, so you know I do ceramics kind of thing. You sure. know, I'll pay you something. They can do, choose what kind of games I want to. I they want me to play, and things for me to sing. You know, all kinds of things. Yeah, so you know uh, we talked a little bit off the interview about kind of being trapped inside, right, and having video games as that outlet and, and utilization of kind of feeling a little bit less stuck. And were there any games you found yourself kind of really attracted to, or games you found yourself just playing more and more often as time went on? At first, it was a lot of Gary's Mod, Prop Hunt. That was the thing back in the day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I also play a lot of multiplayer games, League of Legends, party games. Welcome back to ECAC Week 1. We locked down our first map of Bind with Fanshawe College coming out with a crushing victory of 13 to 3. It's time for CSI to step up as we head over to Breeze. In case you forgot, how could you? My name is Los, joined by Vincent. And tell me, talk to me, what are we thinking on Breeze? Well, so I, I'll give it a buck, Los. I, I think that there was a lot of great fundamentals from Fanshawe coming out from them on Bind, right? Um, and whilst I think those still apply to Breeze, it's a lot more of a shootout type of map, right? There's those long sight lines especially if you can get an operator, even a solid marshal going, anything can happen. So I think that whilst it is certainly not great to see that CSI lost their own map pick, I think if there's a map to go to, Breeze, where you can just shoot a couple heads, definitely isn't the worst to try and make a comeback. And something that I've noticed is that CSI have to diversify their plays. They have to switch it up because Fanshawe, they are very adaptable to anything that comes their way. I mean, specifically speaking about Anastasia's double satchel into Lamps, that was red. It only worked once, but enough about last map. Let's talk agents right now. It's a quick selection. We're seeing that it's looking to be a mirror matchup. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think that that's sort of to be expected, all things considered. I, I think that the uh, the quote-unquote meta is pretty well set on Breeze, and while you can see some differentiations, it's just really strong. It's always good to have a chamber. Free ops, we, we stand those here at Esports U. We like free ops. Uh, you know, add on to that the fact that the uh, jet has always been dominant, well, it's still dominant here, even with the nerf to the dash, just a little bit less consistent. So, um, and obviously, there's only one controller that you can play, and that's, well, typically going to be Viper. So, with those sort of instances set in stone, it's just a matter of what initiator to pick. And KO has long since been the go-to when it comes to uh, the palm trees and sand that give us breeze. It's a understandable and most necessary pickup. So it's a standard thing. It's 
going to be interesting now. It's all about who can use their utility better, who can win out these long gunfights. The shootouts, as you said, starting things off. A, a great mid-presence from FC in the beginning. That looks like it's um, going to turn into what is entirely mid-control and what should be a B hit. Only one player, Anastasia, here. And oh, no! I, I'm not sure if they were hoping for a flash to come through and they were playing anti-flash, but regardless, that is not a great beginning here. And currently, Flaw is not a single player dead. Donkey Lover 302. The last one standing, the 1v5. Have the classic in hand. Looking to ensure this won't be an esports you flawless, and they do. Right clicks. Ooh, oh, no need for those. I was gonna say, right clicks always available, but with 10 HP, it's not to be. Van Shaw doing a great job, and just to do some uh, some thinking about what what we were seeing from Anastasia there. Um, I think yeah, waiting for a flash definitely could be. Also could have been just just hoping that you know nobody would, would check her and you'd get away with one i feel like that angle is often not checked in uh in like first round type of scenarios so i don't think it was that unreasonable to to be in that situation it's just obviously unfortunate when it goes that direction yeah that's what we call a uh an oof moment but this isn't going to be a tactical pause. This is a brief tech pause. So I think that may have something to do with that moment. This does seem to be on the side of CSI. But a strong beginning. And it will cause a rethink. Or a rethinking of the strategy when it comes to the mid-presence. There was no one there to greet them. Not even a look through double doors. Not from Nest. And Anastasia, sure, she was that position in the B-tunnel. But that was even played way back way back onto site by the half wall so i'm wondering what this new thought this new position will be going into round two i don't think i've ever seen this overlay with the negative seconds that's that's crazy i don't i don't think i've ever seen it that's cool but yeah nonetheless i i mean i don't know who it was who disconnected but it would totally make sense for it to be anastasia so well, so, we we can we can see it right there on the on the scoreboard. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, look at that! Using your 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 brain cells, Los. I should try that sometime. It's it's a rare move by me, but we got this it is, done. This is why this is why we're a good duo. You know, one of us turns our brain on once in a while. I think between us we have a we have a full cerebrum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, Anastasia's internet gets uh, sorted out here as quickly as possible. But yeah, I, and whilst we have a few moments, you know, we were talking about kind of moving on from our discussion of the first map. Let's kind of shift our eyes back to that, or at least our thoughts, because um, it definitely was a situation where, yes, we saw CSI become very readable, and some of those individual plays definitely got a little bit stale. But it's not just about individually swapping it up it's also about as a team swapping it up because we saw it was either kind of one or two things it was either a slow play or a fast play there really wasn't anything in between and csi i think need to adjust that if they want to have more success on brief yeah and ensuring that no angle is left to be held freely or safely by the defenders or at least since they're on the defense this time, no angle will freely be taken by FC as they want to make a move. Having every avenue, every possibility covered by your defense is going to be crucial because you can't allow your opponents to gain any information, sneak through, slip past the defenses. And I think switching things up and being diverse is by having a rotation of which site your agents play, which abilities that... FC will have to look for if they want to poke on to B. They may worry about that zero point, or they may have to worry about the headhunter in that long-range position. So keeping them on their toes might be an extra bit of effort to help CSI recover some of their losses from the previous map. Yeah, exactly. You know, just keep uh, keep your eyes open. Try to, try to adjust as quickly as possible. I think that's the long and the short of it. But either way... I, I think that 
I think the bind has to be behind them, right? Like, I know we're still talking about it, but, like, in the mental, right, CSI needs to be able to put that right behind them and just not think about it because getting getting smacked around in the, the fashion with which they did, it's just not good for your mentality in the slightest. And if you're going to, if you're going to keep your mind on that, I think you're definitely at a disadvantage. You just have to reset, rethink, and refocus. Without the doubt. And that's kind of the name of the game, especially when you're playing in a extended series. It's not one of those best of ones you'd see in a, a, a round of 132 or something. This is a, a much longer haul. You have to be able to have the stamina and mental stamina is very important. If you're bogged down and have the negative thoughts about negative plays that you've had previously, that is going to affect you in the present and it's going to affect you in the future. If you even make it to a map three, you have to be able to stay positive, stay focused. And most people think about having game sense or having the best aim, you know, the best lineups, knowing executes, but mental stability and mental fortitude when it comes to esports is a crucial factor as well. Yeah, no doubt. It, it absolutely is. This is arguably one of the stronger things that you have to uh, to deal with and i mean that's what's so impressive about uh, these, these student athletes that you know they are they are taking both sides of that uh both with you know their studies and of course in the game I mean, themselves mentally strong mentally prepared and on uh on target by the way breeze is a beautiful map i don't know like if you agree or disagree los but like it's just awesome Pro props as well to uh these uh these moves love to see them yeah, no. This is uh some ace smooths and, and previously while we were still in the the tech pause, that's all all free cam coming in from our observer. Fantastic job. And but no, I, I definitely have to agree. Breeze is one of the prettiest maps. I mean, I I like Pearl specifically because of the the song that plays when you're on the defender and you walk through the oh my god i have i've never casted pearl before i don't even know what the call out is <laughs> yeah I, I i know exactly what you're talking about i'm not sure what the actual call is though the, uh, the y section it looks like a y it splits <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i connector i feel like right sure sure we'll go with that we're, we're just, <laughs> just we need to stop talking. everybody's just molding in the chat <laughs> uh but yeah, I do. I do think it's it's a lot of fun. By the way, have you noticed that um, this this timer, it's it's seconds and that turns to minutes for just a moment, and then it's back to seconds. I know I'm I'm being enthralled by the dumbest of things. So, you know, when we don't have much to talk about, we really have to look for the the minute details to be enamored by and. This is one of those things that we can actually speak about. And we've hit number six in terms of the minutes here. And by golly, Esports U is absolutely ripping in the tech pause. But the tech pause is over. Anastasia has returned. She has taken the time, reset that modem, prepared and ready to get back in here. And uh, as, we, as we commented on there in the pause, Got to reset the mental as well. You know, frustrating to lose out in such a manner where you have no input in the situation, but it's not going to, it can't, in fact, impact this round or the coming rounds. You see this A hit coming for Through Sando, hit with the decay, and with the classic, they're unable to find decent shots. Now on the island is Donkey Lover. They will be pinched with ease. One enemy remaining. Quick and easy there to get in there, and uh, Seraphic, the only one left uh, alive. And long range, that range, especially with the classic, not uh, not so great. That's a flawless victory for Anshaw College. And uh, all the Dolphins, they went swimming that route, as in they got pushed back towards spawn pretty quickly. But this round, things are sure to be different. We got the weaponry out, or prepared for anything. But look at the uh, at the map. I think we're going to see some A aggression on the cards, which could be very interesting. I like how Anshaw College are looking to adjust things early into this game. And that's exactly the sort of thing that we were talking about. 
play your, play yourself in every round to be a little bit ah. different. Easy to read. Trigger discipline on point. It's not making the commitments. And actually, a great double kill in succession. And that leaves the defenses a little bit easier for this retake, but not quite. Slippery is taking the site. Turn to a two on two. Orange is the notion. Appomatic able to take advantage of the lack of decision from Slippery, unable to choose a target to make that commitment. And CSI takes their first round. Exactly what you wanted to see, right? Like I said, you have the weaponry advantage. You're walking up against the bonus round, and you take advantage of it. A huge adjustment. Right here. CSI looking incredibly strong there in that first gun round, but the same operator in hand. We didn't see a whole lot. Okay, never mind. I got baited. Sustained not going to be with the op this time. Actually, just full rifles. And look at this. This is a five man setup. Five players approaching the, the A site. Gone. The Owl drone going to be pushed out already. Oh. See the toxic screen up and the null command thrown alongside the fragment. Doing everything they can to clear out this site, but Donkey Lover isn't going down without a fight, taking down Slippery, but they will ultimately fall to their doom. And in doing so, it gives space for this Viper's Pit to be activated and sustain to push the offensive, peeking in and out from that cloud. That Viper's Pit is sort of the cherry on top of a crap sandwich that CSI have been served up. Remaining. This round, they just got rolled over when it came to the null command. That toxic screen entirely pushing off any defenders. And, well, you add on to that, the Viper's Pit. It's like, how the heck do you get back in? It's seemingly impossible. And, well, CSLI unable to do so. And, I, I mean, I'm sort of drawn back to a comment I made at the beginning of that one. And, Los, that's, you know, round is great. That's the first step. But if you're not able to put multiple rounds together, you're not able to, to build off of that first round into more, you're really setting yourself up for failure. Shutting them down. Yeah, and that also was a quite a major commitment coming out from Fanshawe with the Viper's Pit as well as the Null Command. But starting things off, Sustain winning the duel against their counterpart and another moment where Fanshawe College rush onto site. Donkey Lover doesn't have the firepower this time around, but you know what? They're still good with the classic. Nice find with that classic. Could throw down the white respect. I don't think that should be uh, something that should be on the cards here, but still, have it for the coming rounds. It's hopefully, One should be a pretty remaining. easy cleanup at this range, though. And it will be. Sustain with a triple kill there. Onto the chamber this time, by the way. Uh, from the Sentinel, from, or rather, from the Initiator to the Sentinel, an interesting change, to be sure. Absolutely. But Sustain has the mobility of a duelist at this point. From a kill down mid, one in the hall as well on site. Sustain is all over the place. And this isn't even that deep of an attack. They just can find the angles where CSI aren't exactly as strong as they were hoping, but this is certainly going to be a strong angle. Donkey Lover taking the Judge in the Viper's Pit, pressing the offensive, and might even overstep their bounds at this moment. If Noted is able to find a lucky shot, this is going to be the end of the A-Site Gambit. I like the commitment to the Judge. I think that's really strong inside that pit. Obviously, the problem then becomes if you can't, get in that pit or stay in that pit for example if the v hit comes through you're in a bit of trouble hey all's well that ends well and right now it's just barely begun and shaw's still down by one so it's not a situation that they've really been in very often that gives csi a great opportunity to be able to stack up towards the b site and towards mid they only have to commit that one in player at a Nice blow dealt by Seraphic, and it will continue until Noted is able to enact revenge. But through it all, CSI are up by two. Four on two. Last two players stuck around by B main. Spike not in their hands, but it will be soon. Half wall, the only position defended on B site. And with the call made that both players are here, 
That should be a swift rotation. But maybe it's not necessary. Sano and Appomatic lock things down themselves. As I mentioned, this, this map can be a real shootout. And that's a great example of where CSI hit all their shots. They make the moves they need to. And it was off the back of a relatively limited investment. They only really invested that Viper spit over a day. Donkey Lover, well, wasn't even bothered inside that thing. So... And Shaw, enough to buy into this round. Hussein is going to be pulling out the 4-4, four to four, so I would imagine. And Slippery is good to use the Blade Storm. So, you want to sort play, of, let's you know, play. they bought what they can, and they have some big value ultimates to play with as well. It's not just Sustain, it's Appomatic with the first opening pick. The trade, though, is instantaneous. Screen down. Not to mention, that's a net win, because they still have the Tour de Force for Fan Shaw. An ever-present threat. Donkey Lover has an issue to deal with. A long-range problem with a short-range solution, but they don't even have a chance to answer this equation. As knife to the dome equals you're gone and dusted. Follow it up. Ever-present aggression. Slippery here with the blade storm. I slipped through. Not even... Not even needing to look up. You'll find your opponents right there. Well, the blades just a secondary notion as the Fort of Forest rings out, rings true, and rings wide with a instant win back for Manshaw College. You know what, I, Los, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm just thinking, CSI, again, they've been pretty good. They've had some good rounds. They're right there on the cusp. But this is such an impactful one. Because their money, it's, it's on the cost of breaking. CSI don't have a lot to work with. Not much at all. Give it a Marshall. We know that the Bulldog has power. I mean, Marshall as well if you're able to hit the shots right. That's a very necessary zero point. But right on the other side is Donkey Lover with the Phantom. Playing it very close. This wall falling. Follow it up with the utility. Everything they've got in the book, but nobody's looking on mid! Sustain walks through and finds three for free! Are you kidding me? Sustain! No oh one God. watching mid? That is just a huge oversight of the most massive proportions. The only good news is that Seraphic has been able to dissuade Sustain, and the blades in mid are still there, but no longer... Okay. All right. There's no, there's no good news. None whatsoever. Six to two, Fanshawe College continuing the domination that we saw in map number one. It was a 13-3. This is not quite there, but a factor of three is the lead that Fanshawe currently holds. Factor of three. Now that's tough. Bringing in the high complex mathematics. But you have to figure out a solution to this problem. CSI are unable to stop any push that's made its way onto A. That B isn't even a factor. I have the spike. I have the spike. Oh boy. Take flight. Here we go. Back to A once more. As you mentioned, like B has just been an afterthought at most. Finally, we've got a commitment on the site itself by Sano. Only gonna go one for one. Traffic good with that bulldog making it three. And with the shutdown of this no command, sustain the last one alive, hit with the suppression. Won't be a chance to save their fallen teammate, but there is a chance to win and save the dead. No success found with that flash and peak. 55 seconds left on the clock, but no spike in hand. This is still. A winnable moment for FC. Teleport's ready. Well, it just got a lot more losable there because there's players on, on both sides of this and vulnerability triggered. A lot to deal with or sustain and... Uh, okay, didn't hear the audio there. For some reason, left. sustain, still not aware. The player on the far okay. side angle. And that is going to be the problem. And Anastasia going to confirm 6-3 to three now for College of Staten Island. It does feel like things are, are slowly but surely kind of getting there. But 
I'm seeing a bit of a pattern emerging. Those two wins and then a loss. Two wins and then a loss. Consistent. But consistency not going to be enough for CSI. If that pattern keeps repeating itself, well, they're not going to win this game. Looks like a couple of caterpillars following each other if you're looking at the timeline. <laughs> 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 Sorry, no, no, very valid point. Los, Los, you're in first grade. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, you're having, you're having arts and crafts time. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, no, it's oh. not a sustainable pattern at all. And the proof is in the pattern. Two for one is not a good deal. You're losing out consistently and losing here. out on fights. You, you don't even need Dakota to step up in that moment because the presence on mid, still an unwinnable scenario, an uncontested lane. Now, we do have Sano finally making some work take place on A, but that's not where the hit will be enacted. No, this is definitely doable now. And, yeah, I was thinking that Slippery Welcome might not want to be that girl. far forward. The good news is there's a tour de force, and this fight that just got invested over here on B makes this a little bit less doable for the retakers. That being said, here they come. Three on two. Staying in a very good position has absolutely been the heavy hitter. Automatic. Not checking this situation. Might walk into their opponent, but no. Sustain, able to take one down. However, this will not be a survivable scenario. Sana, with their third of the round, is clawing back into a very winnable moment now, overtaking the rounds they had on bind. It's four to six. And we've yet to see a lot of mistakes from Fanshaw, but that was one right there. Not only do they allow CSI to get two rounds in a row for the first time this series, I think, but also, they didn't need to invest those players at A. Sano gets that double kill, and suddenly it's a three-on-three. Three. All the players at A needed to do was just back out and walked over to B. And it would have been a five versus three. No way to retake that. I mean, barring something insane. Instead, they invest. They play, try to go for the kill. Play. play a little bit more greedy. And you see what happens off the back. A teaching moment. A mistake that certainly won't be made again, as we know Fanshawe's adaptability, but will have to adapt to their own abilities. However, Appomattox, ever present threats up in Nest, now losing the mobility of that rendezvous. Left is 16 HP, but they still have control of this position, but it's not necessary anymore, and the focus has entered on to B site proper, and they've secured it. Here. Walk in, take the site, plant the spike. Check, check, and check. Everything's starting to look good. Oh, it's sustained out in the middle of the open. A dangerous maneuver. One Gets away with it. Follow up with more to the force, but the final call out is necessary, and all three crosshairs shift to the tunnel. And there was no chance for Anastasia to make their the escape, path. especially with. Them being so wide open in the tunnel. Fanshaw. Now having a reversal of that pattern. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to see that things have been changed up just a wee tad. But the big but there is that it, it wasn't necessarily Staten Island that made the, the maneuver. Yes, yeah, Sano hit all the shots. Props to them. Yeah, I don't want to take anything away from that. But... It was mistakes made by FC that was, were the real heavy-handed application of that victory. Sustain. Ooh. Great opener. They sustained some damage, but nothing serious and followed up with the spike plan. Anastasia to cause a bit of mayhem for the roster of FC, but regardless, Slippery's aggression, bang off. They only have to deal with one more at Sano with the blades, but even if the Cloudburst does have the launch, Dakota still has their number. Switching sides. 8-4, not near as dominant as that first map was. Recall that's 10-2, but wow. 
that dominant overall. Eight to four, though. Definitely able to be able to come back from that. You know, CSI, of course, that they have been at. And, and we saw some big moments. That was a couple there from Donkey Lover that we saw in the replays. But sustain was the sustainable story for F FC as we walked through this first half. So many consistent multi kills, double, triple, even a quad here and there. Some of it comes down to angles being left unchecked. Double doors was a big point of contention. It'll often fall in the hands of Fanshawe and lead to rounds back on A site. One with ease, sustain. Doesn't have that ease of access this time though. They take some damage and lose the rendezvous. Spend a few hundred credits without a single kill. Ooh, nice angle, but Anastasia showing us some of uh, the fantastic shots that she was having over on map one. But big homie certainly showing off his own. With the double swing, you'll have the safety Appomattox unable to take down both. And with such a wild moment and lack of communication there wasn't even a, a moment of readiness for anastasia but it doesn't matter sent on seraphic able to close down the site and ensure no retake takes place wow i mean that was that was ridiculous csi there just at the very end seraphic and sano showing off some massive shots to be fired really well done and you know what i think that it really goes down to uh, Fanshawe College just a little bit slow on the update there. Not quite responding to the communication just fast enough, but regardless, here we are. Fanshawe losing out in the first round of this second half. And CSI right back in it. Crazy aggressive. That is Fanshawe walking on through. Dakota, the only one who's actually sitting on site. And they'll fall down. Where's the trademark? What's watching their back? They placed it by the spawn! Even so, Seraphic Falls. They lose another on the way, but Slippery isn't done. They've got a taste of blood, and they want more. But how much will be spilled? Not much at all. Only two deaths and the spike plant earned by CSI as they take a sixth round. They're right back into this, Los. CSI are not out of this game by the... By a long shot here. Two quick rounds in a row, and they're within spitting distance of this Fanshawe team. That being said, this is a pretty critical round for both both squads as Fanshawe really need to take this win. But CSI, if they can if they can overcome with these limited weapons with the bonus buy, I mean we're talking about pushing their economy into overdrive. They'll be making money hand over fist. Noted. Not looking for information, looking for pain. None is delivered. This majority of CSI are hanging out in that small shop shop in cave. Big homie though. Spike down. Or that what we call aggressive. The long play. And now with no trademark there to stop them, big homie is making big plays. Yeah, and well, after that one, I think it's uh, going to be CSI who need the crime scene investigators because they got absolutely murdered. No one surviving. All five players for Fanshawe walking away with their lives, and it's just a flawless win for them. Nothing going wrong. But we talked about the bonus. We talked about how things were absolutely important into that round. This round, just as much so because... The fact that the full weaponry is out, but Slippery has an operator. This zero point's going to find a lot of information. A lot of hope for that one. Big homie unable to hit the mark. As they had the opportunity, but it was not taken advantage of. Sustain, however, picks up the reins. They have even more power on their side. Sounds of an operator. It'll make CSI think twice. sustain giving themselves away with that recon bolt but recon does its job and then it 
gives them space. Rotation to recover the spike, unfortunately. When you walk right into Slippery's crosshair, it's sort of irrelevant if you find the trade towards Noted. Because you're still down by one. Of course, the Blade Storm. That could be the turning point here. That is available for CSI. You can see a rotation from Dakota. As they're potentially expecting this to take place, but the Cloud Burst will decide otherwise. And now with that spike falling, it doesn't matter about time, but the pressure is on for Sano to close things out. Now with some support, two players for FC looking to make their way, or at least keep the sight line. Look at the crossfire you can see from those laser sights. But it's not enough. There isn't enough coverage. However, in this final moment, Dakota is still able to win out that long-range gunfight. And Fanshawe will take their 10th. And those two rounds that were so critical because it was a fight for the economy. It was a fight to push yourself forward. And Fanshawe, they take it all the way. CSI, the only, only thing that they take away from this one is that they have three of their ultimates ready to go. Especially on Donkey Lover. 302, working with the Viper's Pit. Get on to A, then they're golden. They got it. But getting on to A, that's the problem. Finding your way into that position, a difficulty. The Blade Storm's already going to be pulled out here on the Eco. Try and do additional damage. Trying to manufacture a victory out of the entirety of this situation. Traffic with the Owl Drone out we'll find not much information but it doesn't matter because the pressure is on sustain has already broken through the back lines and has enacted a pincer maneuver now the only one alive it's sano stuck in the halls sustain is looking for blood well they've got a taste of their own but that doesn't make this any easier still three more players to defeat the spike is not in hand a bit problematic to say the least, but 1v3 with the Blade Storm, I've seen it happen before. Operator, though, a little bit too strong. Missed shots as well add on to the problems. 11 rounds for FC. They have it all to do and sustain. Let me talk about them for a moment because sustain went from just double checking, yeah, literally bottom table for FC in the last game. The last map. I'm too far. And now 25 and 10. Teleport's ready. So dominant. Absolutely overwhelming the opposition. And here we go. Once again, sustain. Setting up with a tour de force this time. Never predictable. Never knowing where sustain may be. They want more. Spot the shoulders. Got one through the wall. I don't think what anyone would dare try and make this play happen unless you had the no command at the ready. Anastasia goes in for the peak. Even without the Tour de Force, Sustain is still a threat. And it's left Appomattox all on their lonesome up mid. They don't even have the spike. They don't even have a chance. But I'll tell you what. Fanshaw has a map and series point. Match point. Felt like that, that answer from CSI was out of desperation to try to deal with Sustain. It was as if... They were like, well, what, what can we do? Screw it. Just no command. Take, take them out without the, the tour de force. But like you said, tour de force, no problem. Whether they have it, whether they don't, it's still deadly for sustain. So much done in the FC. And Shaw College on the cusp of victory here. 13 potentially on the cards. It's, oh, boy. That is disrespectful. An insult. Unbelievable. Slippery would actually pull that off. Odin. However, what may even be more shocking. Oh, the barrel spotted, but Dakota doesn't want to take it. Where did this bullet go? He disappeared into a black hole. I tell you what. Placement on site. Dakota still alive. No way they actually go for this. Dakota does. Shuriga shot. No. Two in a row. Leaving Appomattox all alone. And they're utilizing their own pre-placed 
poison orb. There's nothing Appomattox can do. There's no hope, no chance for CSI. And Fanshawe College close it out in two. 13-3, 13-6. Only nine rounds given away by Fanshawe College in this best of three series. And I got to say, for week one of ECAC, this is uh, incredible work. I, I really am excited to see what Fanshawe show us as they continue to put on the put on notice their opposition. So much fun to watch, Lutz. Yeah, no, this was a, a great display of what Fanshawe College has to offer here at Esports U in general. But that is not without mentioning that there was a, a resurgence from CSI, able to outdo themselves from what we saw on Bind, able to correct a little bit more mistakes and just have a bit better gunplay to step up. But it wasn't enough. Of course, the overpowering presence that we see from Fanshawe College is just too much. Even, as we've said before, it's not a one-player show. Anyone can step up on this squad, and it speaks to truth. Sustain, as you mentioned, only eight frags in the previous match. Now, what? almost quadrupling it with 27. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that is, that is clearly the difference maker. When you think about this game, or this map, rather than that first map, I mean, Sustain just, just popped off. It was so consistent. It was so quick with those flanks. It felt like it didn't matter where CSI went. There was always Sustain somewhere in the back line. And that's got to be very frustrating to contend with. But it's also one of those moments where you have to try and think, okay, what are we doing that's allowing that to happen? And, well, CSI, they were consistently grouped up together without holding on to that flank. Yeah, no, that is a, that's a big issue, especially when what we saw back on Vine was a constant pressure. You would always find Sustain specifically sending out a Prowler just for a little bit of an extra idea. Hey, there's a presence behind you. Are you going to push site or are you going to clear me out? Wasting time, wasting resources just to go for a player who wasn't that much of a threat to you. And it's a mental game that was won wholeheartedly by Fanshawe College. But we're going to take a quick break. So don't go anywhere, folks. We have an interview with one of the players from Fanshawe right after this. I really think that there's been a sorely missed opportunity for developers to take a step back from competition and take a step forward with community. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if they do that, I think we all win because community, I would argue is the one thing that no one's trying to solve. Mm -hmm. We're trying to solve recruitment. We're trying to solve competition. 
tell me where's community. Mm -hmm. Honestly, any one of you, go ahead, shout out what's the national community for Scholastic right now. Any title, tell me. Yeah. Where do I go? How do I meet and hang out? Of the storm. How does community you yeah. zero? There's yeah. nothing. It, it yeah. doesn't exist anymore. And it doesn't exist statewide. It doesn't exist school-wide. It doesn't exist region-wide. It doesn't exist nationally. It doesn't exist digitally on Twitch. It doesn't exist digitally on Discord. It doesn't exist through any form of skill-based development. It doesn't exist on any form of you know uh, skill-based learning or just pure socialization and fandom. Mm -hmm. Huge missed opportunity. You wanna take their time and make it more efficient. In my opinion, uh, tell Riot Scholastic politely to stop what they're doing with competitive and their integration with LCS should be, you know, uh, Twitch, you know, symposiums and summits and conversations and learning and uh, all sorts of wonderful things and promoting camps and educational learning activities and RSSA sponsored curriculum. That will move the needle. I don't see any of that. So Chris, that was that was pretty much the last topic. You you kind of wrapped it in a nice package called community. And I was kind of thinking more from an organizer and a broadcaster point of view around growing fandom. And how do we get fandom around collegiate esports to look more like traditional sports across the board? And um, you know, that helps us go out and sell sponsorships in the place of which trickles down to all our member schools that we represent. But when we go to brands and we can't check that box of, you know, a billion impressions and a million views, um, we still are challenged with selling those sponsorships. So my last and final is, do we have any secrets around how to grow fandom? or grow community on, let's just start with on campus. I mean, I got the big one real quick. Okay. Best way to grow community food nights has nothing to do with playing the game. I'll give you a real life example. We used to do dollar burger night at the university of Cincinnati. We would just go out to bar Louie. We used to have bar dollar burgers every Wednesday. We'd post in, in at this time, those Facebook groups, tell people where to show up. Six people, 12 people showed up the first week. By the third month, we had 40 plus people coming. And it was the biggest revenue night of the week for Bar Louie every week, purely because of us. But we had friendships, we had relationships, we had roommates, we had all sorts of great, wonderful things come from that. And that translated to our lands, our club meetings, and everything from that. Mm -hmm. It was uh, nothing beats food nights. Um, no. Just like pro sports, we need to focus on tribalism. And the way that you create tribalism is you have to prioritize in-person experience, in my opinion. Um, I think that there's a lot of companies trying to become unicorn online platforms. But at the end of the day, I think we need uh, pockets and hubs around the country that serve as, as regional and local hubs. Um, mm -hmm. once, you, once you get a group of people together that share their love for the team that is on their campus, they start to develop a bond around that. Um, you can do that online, but it won't be nearly as effective. Mm -hmm. um, professional esports is is having this tribalism problem because it's the majority of it's online. It was it's resulted in um, fans following players more so than than the teams. I mean. That, that's a pretty broad topic, though. Like, we're starting to mm -hmm. see those trends in traditional sports as well begin start to occur. Um, people will follow LeBron and, and specific players on different teams to wherever they are. Um, but I think, I think for collegiate specifically, um, schools need to create meaningful live experiences. And if we're talking explicitly about fandom, you have to make the students on your campus care about the team uh, mm -hmm. first. Uh, that that and welcome back to esports you we just wrapped up the first valorant best of three of the season and it was a crushing victory for fanshaw college and joining us after this matchup is a name that we brought up quite a bit in that previous map it's sustain sustain thank you so much for joining us and how are you feeling after the opener victory 
Um, I'm feeling great. I feel like uh, our team played really well. So we have good confidence coming into the season, and I hope we can continue it. I mean, you guys certainly showed that that off, that you have that potential. Um, I, I am curious about your performance specifically because I think, listen, you can't overlook the fact. Map 1, yes, everybody was playing very well. But, I mean, 8 and 10 goes over to the chamber. Uh, suddenly, uh, it's different. 27 and 11. Come on. How, do, how does that happen? This map, it was just kind of like... I'm not, I guess, as talented on Fade with, like, her util. Like, I am i don't know if the caught it in the stream, but I think it was, like, one of the last rounds. I threw my Fade eye, and it came back at me. <laughs> so I think it was just, like, not utilizing the util well enough, whereas, like, Chamber, it's kind of just easier, and, like, I don't have to, like, plan and strategize as much. So I think just having, like, the raw aim was kind of carrying me. So what I'm hearing you say is that we've heard it here first that Chamber is truly just a point and click adventure game. Yes. It's easy. <laughs> yes, okay. he is. He is the probably the easiest character in my opinion in the game. All right, point click shoot. Got it. It's simple. Okay. Well, I, I do have a, a follow up to that, and it's more about your team in general because this is just week one. Um, what's what? What do you see? Where do you see yourself? Your team adds as you move forward. Do you see yourself as sort of a, able to hang with the very best here in the ECAC or? Are you seeing yourself more as a mid-table team? What are your expectations kind of going into this? Well, I'd be lying if I don't say that I can see us going all the way through. Obviously, we have, like, patches and, like, stuff we need to fix, and we have to obviously review um, a bunch of other stuff. And I feel like as the season goes on, we'll be more comfortable with each other. Our chemistry will also be much better. So I feel like, in the end, I hope we can just win it all, but we'll have to see. Speaking of chemistry, it felt that your team was so in sync. What one of you knew, all of you knew, and you made adjustments just like that. What's the communication structure for your team? Um, we kind of just all talk as much as we can. We try to give as much information as possible while also not flooding people with information. And then usually when we have like the one or two people left, we'll say where they are, like how much health they are, and then we'll let them do their thing. Because every person on our team can is very capable. Yeah, I mean, an IGL in all of you, I, I suppose. But congratulations on that victory sustained. Now, is there anyone that you want to give a special shout out to before we send you on your way? Um, no one in particular. I guess just like say hi to my team, so since they're probably watching the stream. So, and then um, you know, just I guess like my parents because they probably are watching as well. So, hi mom, hi dad, and that's about it. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. And thank you, Sustain, for joining us. Congratulations on your victory. And have a good night, man. You earned it. But that's going to end it here for us at Esports U. We have more action. It's Rocket League tomorrow. Make sure you're tuning in here at twitch.tv slash Esports U. But that's it for us on Valorant. I'm Los, joined by Vincent. Thank you all for joining us, and have a good night. Bye. Two players positioned inside ship. There's the loss of the spot with the Seekers. You have could have told you that as well. Prowler out in return.
Hey, what's up? It's Honix back at it again to bring you the sickest clips from ECAC. But listen guys, here's the thing. Overwatch 2 still isn't out. And it's been so long that I understand what's happening in the Valorant clips now. I just, I don't know how I could have let this happen. Anyways, let's check out the action from week two of ECAC. First up, we've got Miko Baka, who's got a need for speed. But they have to be careful here. That kick up not quite in their favor. Patrick has to be quick to him. And Nico back. He's just soaring through the sky with way too much pace. Yeah, you knew this was coming. When this one lingered up in the air for a bit too long from Jay Neal's touch, Patrick tried to go up for this one. But Nico, like we said, he's been the fastest player in this lobby. The just a friendly reminder that fireworks always add pizzazz to your points. Of this series. Good read there by Jock. Because if he didn't place down that block, that would have been a really early stock lead that he would have gotten. And oh, oh wow, absolutely sniped out of midair. Everyone is in flux when Mount St. Mary's is on the point. And that is the bulk of your healing if you're Emery and Henry. Now you're coming in with both DPS souls and the Shatter, but again, a massive gravity flux comes out from Mount St. Mary, stops it in their tracks before they can even get started. Yeah, the attack vibes are gonna deal the final blows to several members of Emery and Henry. Eve has got beef with BSU and wants everyone to know it. Be one situation left to clutch it out. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid here that the wide swing is going to come out, but Ian's waiting. Ian is being a little bit patient here. Eve is not going to be able to get the first one, and maybe, maybe if Ian was able to wait there a little bit longer, Eve would not have been able to get that free. Someone, not me, is going to have to tell Taylor Halo that sharing isn't always caring. going to beat it. Get right out, Halo. Don't let your guard down. You never know when Rhino will come charging in. Rhino is all the way back. 